In today's Trusted Advisor segment sponsored by Retirement Living, as our loved ones age, we start picking up on things they do differently each day and help them adjust. But there are some red flags when forgetfulness could be maybe something more. That's right. This morning, our friends at Retirement Living Management help us sort it all out as we stop by their Green Acres Wayland community. Families oftentimes know when they need to start looking for memory care. They're seeing things with their loved one, whether mom or dad. You start seeing things that just look out of place at the house. And, and that's when they start asking the questions. And oftentimes that's what I encourage uh, families to come, come see me. We can figure that out together, uh, sitting and talking and just listening and learning and being able to pull some of those things out um, because it is confusing. And if we can help before that, start pre-planning, um, preparing a, a plan for them, um, and be able to share that knowledge, uh, that, that's our goal. And so often, uh, there's, there's, there's small differences between the two. In assisted living, you will have residents with dementia, with beginning stages of Alzheimer's. But they're not at a stage where it's majorly affecting their day-to-day -day activities. Um, there's also not that risk of uh, what we call elopement, or leaving a facility. Um, trying to go home and not making necessarily the right decisions, um, that confusion. Uh, maybe it's getting up in the middle of the night and feeling very confused. Uh, once we start seeing those types of things, we're going to be encouraging um, a family to be looking more along the secure memory care route, which means we're going to have more of a secure unit, still private apartments um, for their loved one and all of the amenities and all those great things. Um, but when it comes to it, you know, it's, it's a secure unit with a uh, keypad and, and safety so that their loved one, um, if in a case of emergency or are trying to leave, they're not going to be able to uh, leave the campus. Is the programming in memory care is structured very differently um, than assisted living. And so they're still a part of everything, they go on all the outings, but they're gonna receive more support. What does the day to day programming look like? In our um, memory care uh, units and, and campuses, what we're seeing is day to day activities that's almost hourly. Um, we have what's called the memory care assistant, which is very much a part of our activities team, um, where they're taking it upon themselves to perform different activities throughout the day immediately right after breakfast um, to maybe it's morning coffee and trivia that leads right into exercise class that then transfers right into lunch where there's that whole process and then maybe a little bit of downtime after lunch that then goes into the afternoon activity maybe live entertainment uh, bingo uh, might be an outing um, anything with our whole campus whole community but but there's this continued process of purposeful activities which helps when somebody has, is confused, has dementia, has Alzheimer's, is wondering where they're going, what they're doing. We don't give uh, time to, to have those questions. We're here guiding and directing through the whole process. Um, so it continues through the afternoon and we even go into some evening activities right up to dinner time and after and all the way until bed. And, and that's, the, that's a big difference between memory care and assisted living. So those are programs that are purposeful, that bring hope, that bring purpose, and you know, really, really supports your loved one through that process. So, just met with a son yesterday at a care conference and he had moved his mom in about six months ago from another one of our campuses that was just assisted living, was unsure whether now's the time to move mom, does she need this help, doesn't she? She just lost her husband um, during COVID season. There was a lot of things going on in her life, but she had started wandering outside of the building um, at weird hours of the day and the evening and that's very scary. And so the family with our guidance determined to move her to our memory care unit. This resident now is, is thriving and the reason she is thriving is because we are giving her activities and purpose and programming that allows her to use the skills that she's had her whole life. If you're starting to see those signs at home, again whether whether there's just little things that are off, um, you know, again, meals, medications, behaviors, um, just things that you're seeing about mom that is not how mom has always been. I want you to ask that question, is it time? It might be time. Just coming in, having a meeting, having a cup of coffee, and we might say, no, it's too early, hang on. 
keep doing what you're doing, you're doing well, but at the same time, we might say, you know, this is gonna be a benefit for your loved one, and this is gonna help this final season, with all due respect, this last journey, um, be the most passionate and, and powerful season that they could have, because there's gonna be certain people around them to support, love, and give them structure, and, and we're gonna prevent those worst case scenarios. Uh, that are oftentimes the stories that we don't want to hear. So it's never too early. Come see us. We'd be happy to just talk you through it. And to learn more about retirement living and their communities throughout Michigan, head to rlmgmt.com or give them a call 616-897-8000. And 